Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be going over all of the spinal nerves and spinal plexuses that we have coming out of the spinal cord. As you can tell from this image, so here I'm using uh, 3D organic anatomy here. We've used this in previous videos. It's a good way to represent it. We don't have a we don't have great nerve models in our laboratory, so we're using this to show the nerves. That way we can spin it around and see this in 3D structures here. So the great program to do that. There are better programs, but this is the one I own, so this is the one we use. Um, now, again, nerves are very complex. They form lots, lots of plexuses, which means they have different interconnections. That way if one nerve doesn't work or it gets cut, it can find maybe another pathway to get through and do its job. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at today, are these different nerves. Now remember, the anatomy of a nerve, a nerve has axons going both directions. So everything we see here is just pockets and filled with axons upon axons upon axons. Uh, now, if we zoom in now, we can start up here, just the basic overview as we're going down through. Now, we did a previous lecture on the spinal cord. Remember how I mentioned there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves as we come out. So all these little roots that come out of the spinal cord are the spinal nerves. So there we have the dorsal side and the ventral side that then form. So this is like the C7 spinal nerve. Um, so that has fibers going both directions on it. So we have motor fibers going out and sensory fibers coming in. Now when they branch into the dorsal and the ventral horns, that does now when they differ directions. If you need a refresher on that, make sure you check out those previous lectures. All right, so now, Starting up here, we have the cervical nerve. Cervical nerves go from C1 through C8. Now there's only seven cervical vertebrae. So just know there's one more cervical nerve than cervical ver vertebrae because up here we have C1, uh, then C2. Then we go down here to where we have C7 and C8. Uh, so if we throw in the skeletal system here, it just gets a little messier. and We can't really see everything going on. Uh, but then down here, we have then T1. So this would be the T1 spinal nerve. So if we throw in the skeletal system, right there is T1 vertebrae. So it comes out inferior to T1. Whereas the C7 vertebrae has the uh, C7 nerve coming out. One is inferior and then there is one, if we hide this here, uh, one, is, one is superior and then one is also inferior. So that's why there's one additional uh, spinal nerve in the cervical region compared to the thoracic region. Uh, so then the cervical nerves branch into two different plexuses. Remember, a plexus is an interconnecting network. Uh, first one up here is a cervical plexus. I'm not going to go through and talk about each detailed one uh, or anything like that. Just know that it's a very complex plexus. And if we start adding muscles in here, they're all going to different muscles and so forth of the neck region. Uh, so we can hide that again. Now we can focus on the nerve. So uh, cervical plexus is the upper region, and then the next part is the brachial plexus. We'll break that down, break it down more coming up soon. So all everything going down through the armpit here, the brachial region, comes from the brachial plexus. Now that one does end at the T1. So if we look at the T1 nerve, here it comes in, and then it forms these different plexuses as we move down through. So this is the trunk region. These are the roots, the trunks, the cords, and then we get down to the nerves. But that'll that's coming up soon. Just giving an overall overview here there's also it's hard to see but in this region right here this is also where we have what's called the cervical enlargement and then in this region here we have what are mostly the intercoastal nerves going to the chest region and all the intercoastal muscles and whatnot so those are all called intercoastal nerves uh, now you don't need to know which one is which and whatnot uh, then we get down to the lumbar plexus this is the region that then so there's the lumbar plexus right here coming down and out. Some of these come out of the cauda equina right here or before the um, conus medullaris they come off. But they then form this interconnecting plexus, which then goes down. Here's a big nerve down there, the femoral nerve. And then the last plexus we have is the sacral plexus. So if we throw the skeletal system back on right here, this is the sacral plexus. All those little foramens in this, the sacrum, this is where those nerves come through. The big one being the sciatic nerve. All right. Now, let's talk about different regions and break them down a little bit more. Uh, so cervical region, we won't, or cervical plexus, we won't go too into detail on that, but here the brachial plexus is an important one. Um, so here we have the roots. The roots go from C4 to T1, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then, so they start as roots, then they become three trunks. So there's a middle, 
upper and lower uh, trunk. And then after the trunks, they become cords. Uh, so down in this region here, so there's trunks. And then here we see posterior cord, medial cord, and then there's also a lateral cord. Uh, then the cords begin separating into uh, posterior divisions and anterior divisions as well. Then they break up into their different nerves. But this is so this, if we add the skeletal system here, we could see where all these nerves are running down through the arm um, or the armpit here, the axillary region. And this is like, they get different names depending on where they go, of course. So if we're moving down the arm here, we can look, at, let's, let's put, keep the skeletal system up so we can see these important nerves as we move down through the arm. So here, this one, this is the radial nerve. It gets its name because it runs along the radius all the way down to the thumb. Um, now, next one here, this is the ulnar nerve. Guess where this one runs? So all the way down the ulna, it actually goes right next uh, there. And if you hit your funny bone, you actually are hitting your ulnar nerve. If you ever hit your funny bone, so right here, it's going next to the ulna, your pinky tingles. That's because this nerve then goes all the way down to the end of the pinky. That's why you get that little sensation in your pinky if you hit your funny bone. Um, then right here, this is the, the median nerve. Median nerve uh, goes down through the little slot in your wrist here. And this is the one that if you have um, uh, carpal tunnel, syndrome that's putting pressure on the median nerve so if we add the connective tissue here if you get inflammation of this retiniculum or aponeurosis here it can put pressure on that nerve and then cause carpal tunnel syndrome in the hands uh, so let's remove that connective tissue now so this is just a couple of the main nerves going down the arm uh, just wanted to highlight them here on this model and show their structures uh, just know that there's a lot uh, so here the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Remember, cutaneous layer is skin. Uh, so the, anything that has the word cutaneous in it or musculocutaneous is referring to uh, muscles near the skin or the skin itself. All right, let's hide the skeletal system for a second and let's notice something. We, we're going to talk about the sympathetic trunk more when we talk about the autonomic nervous system. But when nerves in this region exit, they can, so here we're looking at T3, spinal nerve. It exits, it can do a couple different things. It can go straight out, or if it's part of the autonomic system, it actually comes down these little communicants right here. Uh, so there are gray and white ramus communicants. Now we're gonna talk about these ramus communicants more in the autonomic chapter. I just wanted to highlight them here. So the communication fibers come through here. They can go through the sympathetic chain ganglion, which are cell bodies. Then they can go up, down, or out. Uh, so we'll talk about that more next chapter. It's all part of the autonomic or sympathetic nervous system. Just wanted to highlight those as those being an important part of the uh, thoracic region of the body. And you can see that trunk running all the way down through. So you can get a signal coming out here, going up and then out. So it can jump up and down the body and send communication very fast. And if you think about the sympathetic system, which is fight or flight, that makes a lot of sense. All right, now I wanna move down to the leg or the thigh and the leg and the hip, uh, the first plexus I wanted to mention here is the, um, ugh, the uh, lumbar plexus. Sorry, I guess it's getting tongue-tied between lumbar plexus and sacral plexus. So the lumbar plexus comes out of the lumbar region here. So up in here, this, uh, all these nerves coming out, forming this plexus. Again, same thing as the brachial plexus, these different interconnections, different weaving. The major nerve here is this one right here, the femoral nerve. So if we start adding the skeletal system in here, we can see where it rides down in front of the hip, right in front of the so head of the femur here, coming down through. And guess what muscle we find right here next to the femoral nerve? We had the muscles in here, rectus femoris, and right along the femur. Um, so again, understanding, Muscle system, skeletal system helps name the nerves here. Um, now, another one. So that's the major one of the lumbar plexus. There's also the obturator nerve, which remember this obturator foramen here. The obturator nerve comes through that foramen. Uh, there's the femoral lumbosacral trunk, and then there's also ones that go to the inguinal region. So a couple different separations here of that. So if we follow the femoral nerve as we move down, so that one's the sciatic back there, we'll get to that one next. We have this branch right here. So here, femoral nerve, 
comes down. Up here we have this branch. There's an, one that goes continuous, so that's skin. And then right here, there's another continuous one as well. Moving down through, femoral nerve, still called femoral, but then there's a little random stop right there. Um, just generalized region, then it becomes the saphenous nerve. We're all, when we get to the cardiovascular system, there's a vein that goes through here called the saphen great, greater, great saphenous vein, and that's where it gets its name. Um, so there, the saphenous nerve then runs right down the tibia. Uh, now, when we get, so that's the major branches there. Now, we got to go to the sacral plexus. So the sacral plexus is all coming out of the sacrum, of course. Again, a plexus is this branching network. So the sacral plexus, the major ones are, so we go down to the common fibular, the tibial, there are the cutaneous ones, there's a pudendal nerve, but the big one is the sciatic. So let's turn to the back side here. Remember, this is called a sciatic notch on the hip, and right there is the sciatic nerve. Look at the branchings on the sciatic nerve, lots and lots of branches right there. So if we move down the sciatic nerve, there's a branch right here, the common fibular branch, that goes right next to the fibula then, which then branches again, the deep fibular nerve. Sciatic nerve then branches after the common fibular, still the sciatic nerve right there, the sural nerve, sural is calf, so that goes right down along the calf, we were at the muscles in here, right there's the calf muscles or the gastrocnemius, and then Right here is the tibial nerve. So right, sciatic nerve ends right at the knee right there, the popliteal region. Uh, and then tibial nerve, then it comes all the way down. So major nerves there, uh, just highlighting some of them. And of course you have the different nerves in the foot and whatnot. Uh, so just I wanted to highlight where the major nerves are on this model. I know we don't have like a good model in the laboratory to look at this. So this is actually a good little summary of where the major ones are. Now, also don't forget, I just separated the videos. The cranial nerves are considered part of the peripheral nervous system. So this is a general summary, summary of the peripheral nervous system. Next one, we're going to be going into the autonomic nervous system and looking more at that sympathetic trunk. Uh, and then also maybe a little bit more information about that stuff as well. But we'll save that for now and save it for next time. And with that, if you remember, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But I hope you all have a great day and see you all next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.